So if there is one single habit that has most changed my life, that habit is journaling. I've been journaling pretty consistently since like 2014, and so many of the good things that have happened in my life have happened directly as a result of journaling consistently. But one thing that is really, really helpful when it comes to journaling is having the right prompts or questions. And so in this video, I wanna share 10 of my favorite questions, 10 powerful journaling prompts that I found enormous value in, that I hope you will find value in as well. All right, question number one is, what would you do if money were no object? Now this question is so incredibly powerful and I ask myself it at like like every every three months because it's one of those things that like, there's so much stuff that we do for the sake of money. There is so much stuff that we do chasing like, oh, I need more money, I need more financial security, I need more financial safety, all this scarcity, all, all of this stuff. And it's really useful to ask the question, what would I do? What would I genuinely do if money were no object? Now, if you're a noob at this, you will, your answer will be, <laughs> oh, I would just like sip cocktails on a beach in Thailand and just chill. Uh, but if you've tried to do that, I've tried to do that. Uh, <laughs> and I've realized it's not particularly enjoyable. And everyone I've ever spoken to who's made loads and loads of money, who has then just retired, has been absolutely miserable because actually work is profoundly meaningful if you're doing something that you enjoy. So there's a sort of follow-up to this question, which is sort of question 1B, which is, if I had all the time and money in the world, how would I use my talents to serve other people? And this is also a really, really, really good, good follow-up question because it takes care of the money thing, it takes care of I don't have time thing, and it specifically asks about talents and about service. And a big part of what makes life feel meaningful is when we are doing things that we are good at, when we're using our strengths, and when we are doing something to serve other people. So if you had all the time and money in the world, how would you use your talents to serve others? These days, I, I have a lot of like lunches and dinners and stuff with entrepreneurs and creators and sometimes students as well. People seem to look at me as some sort of life coach or something. It's like, hey Ali, what should I do with my life? And often this is the first question. I'd be like, hmm, what would you do if money were no object? And if they need a little bit of prompting, I will ask, if you had all the time and money in the world, how would you use your talents to serve others? For me personally, asking the question, what would I do if money were no object, has led to a lot of decisions that I've made for my YouTube channel and for my business. If money were no object, I would still continue to write books. By the way, you should check out my book if you haven't yet, link down below. And if you have, I would really love an Amazon review, Feel Good Productivity. It's about how to do more of what matters to you in a way that actually feels good. But if I had all the money in the world, honestly, I would write more books because writing books is cool. I would continue making YouTube videos. I wouldn't do it on a schedule. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have sponsored videos, but I would do it on my own terms. I would still do YouTube videos. I would love to be able to do workshops and seminars and stuff where I teach other people about productivity and like aligning your actions with the life you want and how to reach financial freedom. And so really for me, I realized after doing a lot of these, these journaling prompts, that the main thing I wanted to do with my life was to be a teacher. And that is what ultimately led to me deciding to quit medicine because I realized the thing that I would do to serve others is not practice medicine, it's to teach. And so that one question has single-handedly ch changed the trajectory of my life. Question number two is, what would you like people to say at your funeral? And here you can think of family, you can think of friends, you can think of coworkers, and you can think of people whose life has been impacted by your work. Now, generally family and friends and coworkers even are gonna comment on like the personality traits and like how much of a nice person you were and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but someone whose life has been impacted by your work is gonna comment on the, unsurprisingly, the impact that your work had on their life. So if I think about it for myself, I'd want my family, friends, and coworkers to say I was broadly a nice guy, very, you know, I was humble, I was always there for them, I was present, I didn't let success and stuff get to my head, all, 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 all that kind of personal stuff. But I would want someone, let's say you're watching this and you might be one of the people who's followed my YouTube channel for a while or read my book or listened to my podcast, and if you were to come to my funeral and, my, and your life has genuinely been impacted by my work, what I'd love for you to say is something like, Ali's content really inspired me and educated me and changed the way that I feel and that I think about what to do with my life and my career. Because of Ali's content, I realized I was following a path that had been chosen for me, not a path that I'd chosen for myself. And his content gave me the courage, confidence, and motivation and inspiration and stuff that I needed to change the trajectory of my life. To me, that is that would be absolutely freaking sick if that's what people said at my funeral, people whose work, people whose lives have been impacted by my work. And so doing that journaling prompt and knowing that that's what I'm going for gives me a very clear North Star. It gives me a sense of like, okay, this is the point. This is the point of sitting down here and setting up the cameras and the lights and shit and like talking to a camera. When you can have that level of clarity about the reason why you're doing your work, it makes everything feel much more fun. <laughs> it makes everything feel much more meaningful and purposeful. And it helps sustain you through the moments of kind of where you, where you don't feel like it or where you're like tired and you know you wanna do the thing connecting to that spirit of service really helps. The personal side is also quite important. I've sort of brushed over that, but like it's it's really, like the personal side is really important. What sort of spouse do you wanna be? What sort of parent do you want to be? What sort of child do you wanna be? <laughs> what sort of colleague do you wanna be? The things that 
these people who, who love us and who work with us will comment on is not like, hey, he drove 8% returns for our hedge fund. Like no one cares. No one cares about your performance. They care about how you made them feel. They care, they care about how you showed up. And so often I'll think like, what would I want my family to say at my funeral? What would I want my friends to say at my funeral? And then I will ask myself the follow-up question, to what extent am I actually living in alignment with that? And usually when I ask that question, I realize, ooh, actually, I have been overemphasizing work at the expense of relationships. Uh-oh, let me arrange a holiday or a hangout or a dinner or whatever with some friends. Let me arrange to see my family a little bit more. And like, usually for me, the inertia is kind of in work because it's fun and it's meaningful. It's like all that, all that stuff. And I know that like, okay, I actually haven't been showing up as the sort of family member or as the friend that I would like to be showing up as. Therefore, I can make a change. And really the whole point of journaling prompts is not that it's like n sort of navel gazing that you just do for the sake of it. The whole point of like these sort of questions and these sort of prompts is that they encourage you to take action and to tweak your course in some way or another. Maybe you do the, what, what would I do if money were no object? And you realize, crap, I'm in the wrong career. Let me make a change. That's very useful. Maybe you do the, what would I want people to say at my funeral? And you're like, crap, I haven't been a great friend recently. Let me make a change and nudge myself in that direction. Okay, so one of the biggest tangible benefits that all of this journaling has had in my life is that it has allowed me to make lots and lots of money running this business. And a lot of the decisions that I've made to grow my business have directly come as a result of journaling. But let's say you were to decide to start or grow a business based on your journaling practices. Now you have all this spare money that has to go somewhere. Well, that's where the sponsor of this video comes in and that is Trading212. Trading212 is a fantastic app that I personally use that lets you invest in stocks and shares in a commission-free fashion. They've got a new feature that gives you 1% cash back, which will be allocated to your investment account for each deposit that you make in your ISA, if you are in the UK, for example. So for any money you do deposit into your ISA, you will get 1% back on that money completely for free. They also have a new debit card that helps you save and invest your money automatically. It's designed to seamlessly integrate with your Trading212 Invest account and lets you earn interest on your uninvested cash in 13 different currencies. The card is also free and there are no sneaky fees or subscription plans to worry about. If any of that sounds up your street, then hit the link in the video description and that will take you to this page where you'll be guided on how to set up an account. And if you use that link, you will also get a completely free share up to the value of hundred pounds. It's free money, you might as well. So thank you so much Trading212 for sponsoring this video. Okay, the next question, it comes from my friend Dickie Bush. And the question is something to the effect of, if I were to repeat the things I've done this week for the next 10 years, where will I end up? And is this where I want to end up? And I think this is incredibly powerful. You can do this at the level of day. You can do that if I were to repeat my actions today for the next 10 years, where would I end up? I personally like to do it in a week because like today kind of varies depending on if I happen to have Zoom meetings all day today, it's like that might not be representative of a week. But I think a one week long period is like a pretty good sense of like, that is like the formula that you're following for your life. So last week, what did I do? Well, I went to the gym four times. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I probably spent too much time in meetings last week. Okay, that would result in me spending loads and loads of times in meetings 10 years from now. That would compound in a negative way and that's not what I want with my life. Maybe I spent a little bit too long playing Baldur's Gate all, all of last Saturday. Okay, I probably don't want to repeat that every single week for the next 10 years. You know, I did two date nights. Yep, that's a good amount. I saw my friends twice, saw my family once. Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. And it's like, you can really take an audit of your life. If you were to imagine the last seven days, repeated every single week for the next 10 years because everything in life comes as a result of compounding. You're either compounding positively or you're compounding negatively. I've decided that it's actually really helpful for me if I go to the gym at eight o'clock every single morning. Great, that's gonna compound in a positive direction in terms of my health. Whereas in the past, when I went to the gym maybe like once a week or like never and asking this question of like, will these actions <laughs> compound me positively or negatively? Again, help me realize, oh crap, health is not on track, let's make a change. Again, this is all about deciding what changes you wanna to make to your life. And if you can figure out this sort of ideal week for yourself, what does the week look like? A seven day period where if you were to just repeat that every day for the next 10 years, you would end up in a pretty good place. Again, it's not to say you can be wedded to that. It's not to say that it's completely set in stone, but it's a helpful way of thinking because it helps us realize that we're playing long-term games here. And it's so easy to make short-term decisions at the expense of the long-term game. It's so easy to say, oh, you know what? Just for this week, work is super busy and therefore I'm gonna skip all these workouts. Or work is super busy, therefore I'm gonna skip my date nights or I'm, or I'm not gonna see my friends or I'm not gonna sleep enough. But all of these decisions compound over the long term. So I really love this idea of copy and paste this week, <laughs> extend it out for the next 10 years, see what happens. Is it good? Is it bad? Whatever you decide, whatever you learn from this, you can decide what changes you wanna make. All right, question number four. I also have a list of like hundreds and hundreds of journaling prompts, which are linked down below completely for free. I've got a journaling hub where it's like a Notion page that I keep updated with my favorite journaling prompts. But what have I done in the last two weeks that has energized me 
and what have I done in the last two weeks that has drained my energy? This is the energy audit and you don't even need to write it out. What you can do is you can look on your calendar because hopefully you're living life by your calendar. So you can flip for the last two weeks and you can see, you can kind of color code your calendar events or you can even rename your calendar events with a plus or a plus plus if it gave you energy or a minus and a minus minus if it drained you energy and sort of a plus minus if it was kind of neutral. This is something I got from uh, Professor Grace Lorden's book, uh, Think Big, Take Small Steps. Really good book. And we've also got an interview with her on my podcast, Deep Dive, linked up there and somewhere. But this is great. This is the energy audit. Because again, how we spend our time, how we spend our weeks is how we spend our lives. And if we can figure out what are the things we're doing that are draining our energy and what are the things we're doing that energize us, A, we can figure out how do I do more of the things that energize me and less of the things that drain me. But B, we all obviously have to do things that we don't want to do. And sometimes those things are going to drain our energy. And so we can follow the principles in feel good productivity, for example, the three Ps, play, power, and people. And you can try and find ways to make the things that you are doing that are currently draining you can find ways to turn those into a source of energy rather than a drain in energy. It would be so sick if everything on your calendar was a net gain in energy rather than a net loss of energy. And again, it just encourages us to see what are the changes we might wanna to make to our lives. All right, question number five is the wheel of life. This is something I've talked about a fair bit. So if you're already familiar with this, feel free to skip ahead in the video, but it might be worth doing. Basically, the idea is that we split up life into three different components, work, health, and relationships. Now within health, we've got physical, mental, and spiritual, or body, mind, and soul, whatever that means for you. Within relationships, we've got romance, family, and friends. And within work, we've got mission, money, and growth. I'd like to have a 10th category called joy. And the idea for this question is, in each of these different categories, how aligned are my current actions with the future that I want? How aligned is my current actions in physical health with the future that I want? How aligned are my current actions in joy or in romantic relationships with the future that I want? If you do this exercise enough times, you'll, you can draw it as a little circle, you can turn it into a graph, you can track the changes in your wheel of life over time. Um, I've got a bunch of friends and team members who are super into this stuff. And so if, I, for example, I was hanging out with Tintin earlier today, one of my team members, hadn't seen, him, <laughs> hadn't seen him in a while. And instead of being like, how's it going? I was like, how's the wheel of life? And he gets it because he's been doing the wheel of life every Sunday for the last like several years. And he was like, huh, actually the wheel of life is pretty good. I've realized, you know, I'm actually uh, maybe a little bit negative in this, this, and this area, but actually broadly things are good. It's a nice holistic kind of life assessment. And again, the point of asking yourself this question is that you can identify areas for improvement. Like right now, if I were to run the wheel of life on myself, I would say my joy category is probably a six out of 10. And so I'd like to make more time for joy, which is why I'm considering buying a PS5 <laughs> for whatever that's worth. Um, and I would say my spiritual health, my soul category is also probably like a four out of 10 because I haven't really done any meditation. I haven't really been particularly mindful recently. It's like, by just asking myself the questions, I'm already able to come up with some action points, which again, to reiterate, is the whole point of these different journaling prompts. Question number six is the Odyssey plan. This is three sets of questions. The first one is your current path. The question is, what does my life look like five years from now if I continue down my current path? Next question is the alternative path. What would my life look like five years from now if I took a completely different path? And then option three is the radical path. What would my life look like five years from now if I took a completely different path where I didn't care about money and I didn't care about what people thought? I've talked about this a bunch of times on the channel before. This is probably the journaling, the journaling prompt that's most single-handedly changed my life. I first did this in late 2019 and doing this Odyssey plan made me realize, oh crap, five years from now, the medical career that I'm in is not actually the career I want to be in. That was super interesting. Caused me to make immediate changes to my life and caused me to end up here making YouTube videos and writing books for a living rather than being a doctor. So I think it's incredibly, incredibly powerful. It does take some time to do. It takes some time to think about, but it gives a lot of clarity on like, what are the options? And sometimes you might even realize that like, oh, I just, I've got a bit of a failure of imagination. Like I've, I'm sort of imagining that I have to go down this particular path. But now that I've written out my alternative path and my radical path, my alternative path might be to become a music composer and singer songwriter. And my radical path might be to, I don't know, van life around the world for the next 10 years and be a photographer or something like that. There is this really cool image um, from Tim Urban's blog. It basically shows that like our life has, could have taken a m bunch of different paths, but we took one path to end up here. But where we are now, our life can still take an absolute multitude of other paths, but it's so easy to think and be blinkered by the fact that like, oh, well, I guess I did a degree in economics. I guess I have to become a banker. Or I guess I did a degree in medicine. I have to become a doctor. And so just to confine ourselves to a path that is not actually the path we necessarily need to be on. And so the point of the Odyssey plan and these other sorts of, sorts of journaling prompts is that they help us realize that actually you've got way more control and you have way more options available to you than you might think. 
And so to me, every few years, I will, <laughs> actually every year when I do my annual review, I will just redo my Odyssey plan, just to make sure that I'm thinking big and I'm not allowing the inertia of my existing path to keep me on the road of content creator or whatever the thing might be. All right, question number seven is incredibly powerful. What is the goal and what is the bottleneck? I find myself asking myself this question a lot. I also ask it a lot to people when I do these sort of pseudo life coaching and business coaching sessions with other creators and entrepreneurs and stuff. What's the goal and what's the bottleneck? The first half of that question is incredibly valuable. What's the goal? If you are struggling with absolutely anything, if you feel like you're torn in multiple directions and, and stuff, you feel like you might be in a transition period of your life right now, I suspect, if you're watching this channel, ask yourself, what's the goal? What am I really optimizing for? And so often we get embroiled in our problems and we don't remember to ask ourselves, what is the goal? Because the goal changes everything. I was at a, a writer's retreat the other day. We had this little like hot seat session where the idea is that you get, you're in the hot seat for 45 minutes and you discuss your problems or your challenges and then everyone gives you advice and asks you questions. And one thing we realized is that basically all of us go in the hot seat and we were describing like a problem that we were having and someone in the group would ask, what's the goal? <laughs> And then the person in the hot seat was like, hmm, I guess the goal is I want to get my business to $10 million. Okay, cool. What's the bottleneck? I.e., what, th what is the one thing that's most stopping you from getting there? We don't have enough products to sell. Cool, we can solve the bottleneck. I guess the goal is to really enjoy my work life. Okay, what's the bottleneck? What's stopping you from doing that right now? Well, I guess I've actually been spending a lot of my time chasing money rather than chasing passion. Huh, that's interesting. What's the goal and what's the bottleneck is often like, a question that cuts to the heart of anything that we're struggling with. And so it's a question I ask myself a lot when I'm doing my own journaling. And it's a question I love to ask other people because it just encourages us to think in a way that we might not otherwise. All right, question number eight is actually a journaling prompt that I got from Brian Tracy. Brian Tracy is like this old dude who's written a bunch of really good books about goal setting and productivity. And there was a good YouTube short from a clip of his that I came across a few months ago. Take a clean sheet of paper and write down goals in today's date and then write down 10 goals that you would like to accomplish in the next 12 months and write them in the present tense. I earn, I achieve, I weigh, I drive such and such a car, I own. And then you take this list of 10 and you say, if I had a magic wand and I could wave this magic wand and I could have any one goal on my list within 24 hours, which one goal would have the greatest positive impact on my life? And usually this will jump out at you. Put a circle around that goal. And that's a goal you transfer to a clean sheet of paper, and then you follow the seven steps. Write it down, set a deadline, make a list of everything you have to do to accomplish it, organize the list into a checklist, take action, and then do something every day. If you'll just do this, nothing can stop you but yourself. So for me, at the start of the year, when I, I led like a, an annual planning session for like 12,000 people in my audience, it was, you know, if you joined it, then welcome back. Uh, this was the sort of idea that I used to land on my own goals for the year. For me, I've got like, Three main goals, work, health, and relationships. My work goal is to get our business from $5 million to $10 million in revenue, <laughs> for whatever that's worth. Uh, my health goal is to get into the best shape of my life. And actually, over the last two months, three months, I have gotten into the best shape of my life. Like, I'm in better shape than I've ever been in terms of muscle mass and in terms of general activity levels. And so I've got another nine months to bulk a bit more, then do some cutting, then think about flexibility and mobility. But all of this is for the goal of getting into the best shape of my life, which I realized was a really important thing for me on the health front. And then on the relationships front, got a couple of goals, one of them is secret, but the other one is to host six mini adventures for friends and family. And that's something that I'm working on this year because I think it would be cool. All right, question number nine. This applies to entrepreneurs. Uh, and the question is, do you work for your business or does your business work for you? I first came across this question about a year ago at a entrepreneur's retreat that I was in in California of all places. Um, and that question just sort of pff, hit me like a baseball bat to the face. Do you work for your business or does your business work for you? I was at the time, oh crap, my business doesn't work for me. I work for it, like I'm an employee of my business. Like my business is the, the, the prison that I've created for myself and I'm a slave to that prison. Okay, cool, now that I know that, let's change things up. I want my business to work for me rather than for me to work for my business. I wanna make videos on my own terms. I wanna do stuff that I wanna do. I wanna sort of, I want it to feel purposeful and spirit of service and all that kind of stuff. But that question caused me to make a lot of changes in my business and therefore by extension my life. And now I'm in a way less stressful place than I was this time last year. I'm way more chill. I enjoy the business a lot more. I feel much more confident about our future as a business and finances and stuff. And I feel much more 
aligned with the stuff that I'm creating and the content I'm making. This is a pretty fun video for me to make. I freaking love these journaling prompts. I love these questions. But a year ago, I would have been like, no, but like the titles are not clickbaity enough. And like, oh, I'm not sure anyone cares about journaling. And like, oh, we don't have any products about journaling. So why would I make the videos? But now I'm just like, I just want to make videos that I think would be just useful to people watching them. Because the North Star is, if you visit me at my funeral, <laughs> uh, I want you to, I would love for you to say that something about my content, my books, my YouTube videos, my podcast, whatever the thing might be, something about that content helped change the trajectory of your life. And so if even one of these journaling prompts that I've given you out of the 10 in this video helps you make an action or make a decision that causes you to take action that causes you to change your life, that's pretty cool. That's what I'm here for. And then finally, question number 10. If I knew I was going to die two years from now, how would I spend my time? Now, this is sort of a variation of like, if you knew you were going to die tomorrow, how would you spend your time? But generally, if you knew you were going to die tomorrow, you'd probably do very destructive things. But if I knew I was going to die two years from now, what would I do? I wouldn't just stop working because I really enjoy my work and find it meaningful. Um, I'd probably play more video games, which reminds me, I should probably get that PS5 and plug it into that TV. I would probably see my grandma more. She's in Pakistan at the moment, so I'd probably fly to Pakistan and just chill with my grandma a bit. I would probably host more dinners with friends. Hmm. <laughs> One of the things I would do if I knew I was going to die two years from now. And then why am I not just doing those things now? Obviously, that's what the question is implying. I do like to change the time timeline sometimes. Sometimes I think, okay, if I knew I was going to die 10 years from now, well, what would I be doing? If I knew I was going to die two years from now, I probably wouldn't write another book because it, take, it took three, three and a half years to write this freaking thing. But if I knew I was going to die 10 years from now, I might actually think, you know what? I think it would be really nice to work on two books during that time, during for the next 10 years. So really the time horizon does sort of dictate what projects you want to work on. But again, the point of this stuff is not that you become wedded to the thing that you said in the journaling prompt. It just gives you ideas. So yeah, if I knew I was going to die two years from now, or five years from now, 10 years from now, whatever the thing might be, how would I spend my time? And what of those things can I just do now? So that brings us to the end of these 10 powerful questions that have personally had a massive impact on my life. If you're interested in a more in-depth guide to exactly how to journal with like expressive writing and morning pages and different journaling techniques, check out this video over here that I've done a few months ago about how to journal to change your life. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you took something from this video and I would love it if you could leave a comment down below which of these is your favorite question or if you're a journaler yourself, what is your favorite journaling prompt? I would love for you to leave that down below and we can compile them and put it out as a community post or something. But anyway, check out this video over here for the ultimate guide to journaling. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.